All right, this is the February 19th meeting of the Conway Select Board. Um, on the agenda, it does say we're going to have a joint meeting with the Finance Committee at 6.30, but that has been um, postponed. We're being taped by Frontier Community Access Television. We're viewing later by our residents and the public. First item on the agenda is our minutes for the February uh, 11th meeting. Uh, has everybody had a chance to review those minutes? I thought they were well done. Yeah, as usual. Yes, absolutely. I'll make a motion that we approve those minutes. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda, we have three warrants. A vendor warrant for $92,063, a payroll warrant for $107,322, and a payroll deduction warrant of $26,000. Seven hundred sixty-three dollars. I'll make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? I have a second. All in favor? Yes. All in favor. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Philip. Yeah, thick in the middle of uh, frontier budget season and Conway Grammar School budget season. So there were several budget committee meetings. I actually spent several hours on the phone with Desi in an attempt to get educated as to the Chapter 70 Foundation budget and how population and income affect the amount that we owe in assessment to the school, mm -hmm. which I swear learning how to do rocket re-entry trajectories by hand would be easier. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, so I've learned a lot about that and I had a um, long conversation with a uh, uh, bunch of different people about the budget. So. Um, got an opinion from the outside uh, auditor um, as to the frontier budget too because I had questions about the calculations and everything so um, yeah we're gonna talk about that more mm -hmm. that was that was it okay all right all right I had a uh, Massachusetts Municipal Association board meeting last week um, I was also elected to the Personnel and Labor Relations Policy Committee for the MMA. Why, congratulations on your election! Oh yeah, that was great. Um, <laughs> uh, I had a local government advisory commission meeting. Lieutenant Governor and her secretaries were there to talk to us. Uh, and I had a Massachusetts Selectmen's Association board meeting. And that's the meetings I had last week. Yes. Public comment. I don't see any members of the public here, so I don't think we have public comment. My next item on the agenda is a discussion of the proposed marijuana establishment host community agreements. Okay. Hey, uh, as I recall, we postponed it for a week to get town council's opinion? Yes, we did. Do we have anything from town council? I do not have anything yet from town council. I will, uh, okay. Let's, uh, I do have a couple of uh, corrections or uh, additions to the agreement. You want to go through those? It's just a, sure. to a couple paragraphs. It would be the same on each of them. Sure. Um, which, so, one, which one are you looking at? Well, it, would, it doesn't matter. Different? Okay. Um, manufacturing. Okay. Yeah. So the first one is paragraph 1B. Mm -hmm. We have to propose to put in an amount. So I would say 3%. Uh, that's what that's, we voted. That's yes. manufacturing, yeah. 3%. Yeah. And then for C, the schedule of their payments. I'd like to coordinate that so that, that makes sense for the town bookkeeping. Um, one of the things that I saw that towns can, are doing is they're uh, asking for buy in or twice a year payments at, on the same date that property taxes are due. And does, would that have any? I mean, what I'm trying to say is that I'd like the, the year that they're paying for credited in that year to the work as close to that year as we can get and, um, rather than these big time lags of um, our books reflect what took place two years ago kind of a thing. So. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. yes. And I, I will check with um, yeah, uh, Jan on that. Yeah, I'm sure Jan, Jan would be. Um, we, we may actually want it. Um, we may actually want to have it at 
a, at a sort of an, a, a staggered schedule with the payments just to get the cash flow, um, mm -hmm. make, make sure the cash flow is good. But yeah. your general point, or absolutely, we need, to, we need to think it through. So I will check with her on that. And then going to uh, paragraph two, I'm sorry, paragraph three, which is page three to five, top, all the way down to the last sentence of that paragraph. Um, without limiting the second within two business days after the effective date, I would just add to that and upon request by the company, just because we don't want these kind of calendar things ticking off without no, without no. A, a, a heads up. So no, we, we're going to have notice. Um, does it make sense? Two business uh, days is really tough when the town government's not even open five days a week, and so I, yeah, you know, yeah. just we got to make that work for the town. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure I'm sure Jack will have some comments on this as well. The, yeah, the effective date—that's the effective date of the host community agreement. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not sure I get. That's the effective date of, of this. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there's more to it than that. There, that there are times when the town is going to have to issue some type of paperwork pursuant to CCA reg regulations kind of thing. That's what I interpreted that as. Mm -hmm. yeah. That if they're requesting additional documentation or information requests from Cause, the town. Because two business days, that's, that's, that's a little short. It is, is short because if there's a need to call a meeting, Mm -hmm. We need to give 48 hours notice. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would say three at a minimum. I, and, I would and I'll go maybe seven for the four or five. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would I would ask Jack about that. See what he suggests. Because again, he's been through a yeah. number of these. And then. Um, Um, Hello, uh, Tammy. Come on in. Paragraph six. I just had a question about. Um, so paragraph six is if they're not paying their taxes, they can be delicensed by, by the or depermitted from by the town. And I just wanted to make sure that the procedures that they set up there are what we would do anyway, and that they mm -hmm. don't. Yeah. And then um, paragraph seven. The second paragraph there, where it says they should report the discovery to town police within 24 hours, I would say that should be report immediately upon discovery. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Uh, seven, the second paragraph in paragraph seven. Yeah, yeah. The time limit. And, and all of those concerns are applicable to both agreements. Sure. Uh, okay, Tammy is here to do some uh, notary work for us. So let's let's um, let's just suspend the uh, the agenda and go to the vote on uh, Chapter sixty one, right of first refusal. This is something we've already yeah. discussed, yeah. and essentially all we need to do is is sign yeah. and. Uh, I'll make a motion that we sign this notice of relinquishment of right of first refusal for the land parcel at map 407 lot 2 Conway, Massachusetts, uh, book reference, uh, book 103, page 43. I will second that mouthful of a motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Share up if you don't mind. Sure. You want ID, Tammy? I do need that. Okay. Please.
Oops, sorry. Did you have a chance to review that um, capital improvements? Um, we're gonna have, we're gonna that's have, what they want to say. We're going to have Tom look at it a little, little bit and maybe uh, spruce it up a bit. Thank you. Thanks, Tammy. Thank you very so welcome much. Anytime. I'm very short. Sure <laughs> well, as long as you call me at work, Tom. That's the only way I'd be able to do it, because I don't carry it around. <laughs> but I'm glad to help out at any time, gentlemen. Great. Have a good night. Thanks, Thanks Tammy. Okay, back to escrow policy for two businesses. Okay, what, what do we need to discuss on that? Phil had asked that we, um, that we, uh, does the nature of their application require two different escrow payments um, for, for the application? <clears throat> I would think we're talking about two different businesses, right? But that was one more question for the lawyer, I think, mm -hmm. just to... And we agreed on the on the twenty five hundred escrow. Right. So it would be two times twenty five hundred. Right? Uh, we should, should clarify that in the policy. Um, they might say. You know, well, we were told 2,500, well, we were told, we, we didn't know it was two businesses until you came in. Yeah. Um, but I think we do need to clarify it in the policy. I, I'll, I'll look at that and maybe propose an amendment. Okay. Um, because I don't believe it's clear, and it's, we could conceivably get pushback, and I'm not sure how much it's worth. Um, kind of depends on how much work Jack's going to put into it. Yeah, and that, that's, you know, that's exactly what it depends on. Yeah. Since we're not having a joint uh, meeting of the Finance Committee, are we going to go over any of these things? Are we going to let uh, No, uh, just that I have some preliminary indications that the Frontier budget will be higher than expected. Okay. Due to more enrollees. Well, um, 
the, it's actually primarily due to the increase in the town's wealth. Um, what, are we making more money here in town? We, the or? town increased its, its growth by almost 5% last year. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? What? yeah. Wait a second. What growth in what? Yeah. Um, good in, question. In income? Property value. Property value? What, the, we, e EQV? Is that percent? They're using the EQV, equalized valuation. Um, that's part of it. But we had, the rate of growth that's on the Chapter 70 cherry sheet for our town is 4.65% last year. Hmm. And that is more and than double. Is that enrollment? No, that's uh, the rate. Enrollment is just one part of the equation. The relative uh, 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 wealth of the community is the other. Did we have more millionaires move into town? Um, I, Tom had, had suggested it might be the one-time Comcast infrastructure payments, um, but I don't. It's it's kind of a mis. It, we did reass they did reassess, and that came out right as an as an increase. But the the that fact combined with the fact that our three neighboring towns all had rates of growth less than half of that made a rejiggering of the chapter 70 foundation uh, budget figures that were sort of independent of what the frontier budget is almost the frontier budget itself is like looking at like three percent mm -hmm. but our uh, um, uh, portion of, portion that, of yeah. that is going to be increasing um, double figures john oh that's wait great. till you see this and um and I, you know, that's why I've been trying. I've been really trying to understand this. Um, it's a uh, difficult. The, the the chapter seventy formula is like, but that that we're actually getting penalized. So uh, of the increase mm -hmm. in in Frontier's budget from this year to last year, it's two, um, not a little over two hundred thousand dollars, I think. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be paying more than half of that increase, which is just staggering. It, when you look at budget numbers that have Waitley, Sunderland, and Deerfield all under 2% uh -huh. and us in double figures. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we'll uh, have those, but not for next Monday. We'll have them for uh, a week from that Monday because mm -hmm. a week from this Thursday will be the budget meeting where the draft budgets are. are and I wanted to let you know and, that. And, and they won't be final budgets, yeah. but they'll be the numbers that I go on for my... For my so third budget, and we'll have to rejigger as necessary. Thursday, the twenty eighth of this month at five fifteen mm -hmm. is a Frontier School Committee meeting at the Conway Grammar School, mm -hmm. where the budget is the only item. And history will be being made because it's the first time ever that Frontier Regional School Committee met at the Conway Grammar School. But um, so there, there'll be forty five minutes to take a crack at that budget. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. hoping that our finance committee will come to that one. Um, and then at six o'clock is the Conway School Committee meeting, and we'll be doing the budget or discussing the budget there too. That's five thirty at the Conway. Five fifteen is the Frontier School Committee. Five fifteen on the twenty eighth, and six p.m. is the Grammar School. Six p.m. That's Frontier. So one trip, one location, double your fun. Sounds yeah. great. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, and I was just shocked at just how the budget itself seemed so uh, reasonable, and yet the outcome for our town seems fairly disastrous. Yes. Yeah. Um, We're paying the bill. Yeah. That's that's the uh, the mystery of Chapter Seventy. Uh, um, the, the other part to that equation, however, is that the, the actual amount of reimbursement that Frontier gets from Chapter 70 from the state only went up $15,000 this year. Everybody, and, Everybody's complaining about and, their and, Chapter 70. And our transportation reimbursement went down almost 100000 So yeah. uh, almost half of the gain in Frontier's budget is actually the loss of state funding in that amount. That this is the first time in anybody's recollection that state funding not only stayed flat, it went down from year to year in a record budget surplus year. Yeah. Everybody's. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you, Phil. Um, items not anticipated 48 hours in advance. Do we have any? I have one. Okay. Uh, I got a request today um, 
from the treasurer collector for some administrative help. She says, uh, there are two reasons for the need for temporary assistance in the treasurer collector's office. We're currently beta testing our new tax collection software. Motor excise vehicle bills have been mailed out and we're receiving many payments. The data is being entered in both old and new systems so we can confirm beginning and ending monthly balances. Good idea. The assistant treasurer collector has had a recent leave of absence and is unable to put in any makeup or additional hours. I expect the temporary help to be five to 10 hours per week for three week, 13 weeks maximum. This temporary position is not an additional expense and can be paid within the current budgeted salary line. So the proposal is um, to, for her to hire Michelle Duguay, who is the, uh, the uh, highway uh, clerk mm -hmm. now, um, and uh, for a, uh, a maximum of 13 weeks at $20 per hour. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, Michelle does a nice job. That, that's a good idea. You know Michelle. Um, not, not well. But She'll be there tomorrow okay. morning. Sure. Right. On in. Um, she, does a, she does a good job. If Jan says she needs this, then she's mm -hmm. got my support. Yeah, they, but the, the old and new systems, they got to they gotta run parallel for a while. Yeah. You know, so so yeah. what does that mean? We're supposed to make a motion and yeah. approve it? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve this request from the treasurer for the temporary help for five to 10 hours a week for 13 weeks maximum at $20 an hour. Do I have a second? A second. All in favor? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, okay, you have an update for us, huh? I do. Uh, under boards and committees, something from the select board. Uh, Bob Armstrong, who is not able to be here tonight, has requested that an item be placed on the next agenda. The item mentioned in an email from Superintendent Buonaconti about advocating for the Senate uh, bill 2292, the Mass Rural Schools Coalition, formed in March of 2016, has been advocating for educational funding equity since its inception. This year, Senator Adam Hines has proposed a continuation of rural school aid at a funding level of $9 million. Critically, based on the advocacy of rural's, the Rural Schools Coalition, Senator Hines has proposed the addition of a rurality factor in the Chapter 70 formula, which would be more, a more permanent solution for all of us, so um, that's to help tip the balance of Chapter 70 in our favor. Yeah, it right. probably won't happen, but good so, idea. So uh, the idea is to uh, come up with a, a letter supporting this and send it out to uh, whoever we can send it out to. Absolutely. This is a problem that requires billions to solve. Nine million. Okay, so for departmental news, I submitted the community compact application for a best practice in human resources management, requesting $4,500 for a study to determine what a shared HR position for Frontier and its four towns could look like. The other three towns all signed on, as well as Frontier. I had intended to apply for the grant as an efficiency and regionalization grant, but after speaking with Sean Cronin, who's in charge of the program, and on his advice, I applied under the best practices program instead, which has a larger pot of money yeah. and a rolling deadline, though I did submit it in time for the other deadline. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand unofficially that the best practice grant proposal we applied for so the FERCOG can do its accounting training program has been accepted, though we await formal notification. That's great. John Moore and Lisa Gustafson of 40 Whateley Glen Road have scheduled a Friday, March 1st community outreach meeting for a marijuana establishment for a farmer cooperative. The meeting will start at 7 o'clock. I thought it was for a med medicinal medical retail. That's a different proposal for which we have not received a proposal yet. Okay. Uh, I understand that the FERCOG will only be able to fund one or two priorities under the DLTA this year. I'll check in with them to see about changing the form to make it clear that lower priorities are just for assessing need or however they use the broader number of requests. Uh, Bob Armstrong had requested work on a pollinator corridor. They're going to apply to a separate grant program for work on that 
and plan to circulate a draft letter of support this April. Our grant proposal to FEMA for Delavar Avenue work has been submitted by MEMA, who had some last minute questions that were dealt with by our consultant at GZA, Nate Russell, an Asheville resident who sees the slope off Delavar Avenue every day on his way to work. We'll see whether it has been reworked sufficiently to make it clear that it is a vulnerable spot in town. After consulting with our administrative assessor, I am optimistic the budget I present will be well below the levy limit, but we still have virtually no revenue figures as the utilities are not required to get their new growth figures in till March 1st. They have been available earlier before, as have the school budgets, and I've been able to complete my budget by the end of February, but I cannot make any guarantees this year. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Okay, select board comments. Phil, you have any so comments? just by way of um, something that you mentioned in your update, Tom, the, uh, I was notified that I was appointed to head the uh, hiring committee for the new Frontier uh, business manager. Lucky you. Yeah. Uh, um, and as you know, the pa in the past, Tom, the uh, a small additional stipend was given to the business manager to also be the human resources person. Yeah. And so I don't know. I never got to really talk to you about whether you thought that model worked at all. Um, I, I saw that the job description that was posted for it was sort of vague about that. Um, yeah. Uh, and and uh, whether you have any thoughts regarding uh, um, questions to put to candidates regarding that. So. All right, uh, we, can, we can certainly talk about that. Um, as time goes by, uh, right off the cuff, I can say um, I don't think the <clears throat> extra stipend for the business manager to take on that role is the best way to address the problem. That's one of the reasons that, I'm, that I've been looking at trying to do something like this since last year, really, or a couple years ago. Um, HR is an increasingly specialized discipline that requires a lot of expertise, and even people who know a lot don't know everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> as, as, as we've discovered, um, so, um, I don't think it's going to make any difference at all for the next year or perhaps two because we've got to, you know, get this study done and we're not going to have it done by the time to do anything for FY20. Mm -hmm. So it'll be FY21 by the time we have anything in place. Um, so whatever, however Frontier needs to deal with it in the short term, they should certainly do so. But um, I think that, that having, having the candidates know that this is something that we're looking at um, would be helpful, but that we do not have a, currently, we do not have a dedicated staff person for HR anywhere in the, anywhere mm -hmm. around yeah. here. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Okay, mail. Okay, we have a, Piece of mail from uh, the United States Department of Commerce, U.S. Census Bureau. Oh, that, that's for you. That, that's, 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 in, that's in this one. Oh, I have to get the, uh, the purple one out. Sorry. That, that's, all, that's all your, um, your personal stuff. Sorry. And you're, you're, gonna go, you're just going to go over all of these numbers, right? Let them know they're right. Oh, we don't have any other, uh, we don't have any other mail. Okay. Right. That, that's just, uh, you just have to log in somewhere and, and let them know that your name and address are correct. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, we, we, if there are no changes, we don't have to do anything. Okay? And there are no changes in the boundaries of Conway. Yeah, right. we, haven't, we, haven't, we haven't grown, we haven't taken over any other towns yet. Yet. Yeah, but okay. we're working. Well, I, I did find out, though, it's still a state law that the select board is required to do an annual perambulation of the town borders. You're yeah. required to walk. We're supposed town. to walk the borders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's yeah. our walks? Yeah. We're going to schedule our walk. We're, we're going we're gonna to schedule it in a nice day during the summer. <laughs> All right. Okay. And, and All right. If we were in England, we would re be required, one of you would be required to take a small boy, hold him by his feet, and bump his head on the corner on all of the corners. Oh, I know, the just boundaries. the boy for that. Okay. 
we're getting a little off topic here. Thanks. All right. Next. <laughs> next. Next. <laughs> okay. Next item. Uh, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments workshop on small term rentals, short term rentals. Uh, is March 7th from 6 to 8. You're very interested in that. I would love to go to that. I have um, uh, negotiation Union 38 teaching and contract negotiations that are scheduled to start at 4.30 and go till uh, six, uh, 8 o'clock. I am but, going to go to that. But I would love okay. to go. That's one that I thought yeah, I, mean, I really I mean, wanted yeah. to go to. Yeah, I may try to get to that one. That's, that's well, we'll, we'll have all the materials for you at least. Yeah. Also, the Center for Echo Technology has rescheduled the solar access meeting for Wednesday the 20th, that's tomorrow night, from 6 to 7 p.m. here in the town hall. Okay, and our next meeting is Monday the 25th here in the town hall at 6 p.m. And I Again, I don't foresee the need um, for the finance committee to come in. We've covered all of the departments. All of, we've gone over the the money articles. I've I've handed those sheets out for for several weeks. Nobody seems to have had any particular questions for me or any of the departments involved for further information before we start making recommendations on those. If anyone does have any questions about it, please let me know. Mm -hmm. We'll bring people in as necessary. Um, we're, we're basically waiting for the school school budget. Yeah, so right if you can please let the morning. finance committee know about next Thursday. Oh yes, I do. Five fifteen and six o'clock at the Grammar mm -hmm. School. So okay. Any other business to come before the board? I do not think so. Okay, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Do I have a second? second? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 